So, uh, good, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Anthony Mita. I've done... Oh, I don't know what's happening with this. Stuff. Do we need a mic or not? We we'll just put the mic there. So I've done some... Um, I'm, I'm here to represent... Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm here to represent QUT. Um, I've done quite some few, few research searches at the mobile lab. That's uh, if, you, if someone's from Brisbane and considering doing research, that's a really great place to go. But, um, so I'm here to, to, to talk about core data um, again. And um, it's, um, it's pretty much example oriented. So we'll, we'll run through code. And um, I've, oh, I, I started to use core data a few, a few years ago, or more than a few years ago, but quite some time ago. And I wish when I started to use it, I, I, someone would have told me what I'm about to tell you. Again, you know, it's not everything that you need to know about core data. Just it's you need to know something about core data to understand what what I'm going to, to talk about. But it's not like I'm not pretending you will know everything. No. Once you're done, um, I'm using um, iOS example, but it has nothing to do with iOS. So you know, my, it could be Mac. This could be applied to Mac or iOS. There's no difference at all, except for the new features that's on on Lion and that, and that are coming at, at some point, but I'm not even going to talk about this feature. So let's get started. <laughs> and yeah, the first, the first thing that I should say is that whenever, some, when I, whenever someone starts to look into curl data, they're like, oh, it's this big stuff. But um, it could be sometimes scary, but in fact, it's not. It's really, Apple's done a great job. And they've, they've been using Core Data in, 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 in the app for forever now. And I think they know what they're doing. And um, yeah, you shouldn't be scared. You should just try. And uh, it's a bit simpler with the iPhone because they build some great stuff, but it's done. So like I was saying, we, we uh, uh, we'll be running through examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is that i um, setting up a new project, basic project, iOS project, so new, new project. So if we go and we start using Xcode, you just, you know, start with, with uh, navigation based application or pretty much anything you want. And you will, you will, you will, you know, give, give it a name and, and press this, this little stuff saying that you pretty much want to use core data. That's, that's all you, you've got to do if you want to start that uh, iOS project. So we we'll put this somewhere. Here, no. So, um, I'm not going to do this right now. So I've already set up a project. So at the end of this talk, I'm, I'm going to give you an URL with um, all the projects I've done. So we will be running through seven different projects. Um, so the first project is the basic one. So pretty much you, you, you start this project, you build and run, and you see something's happening on the screen. You press on the button. And you know you've got stuff. So there's probably you know we we're using core data. So if you start the app again, and if you completely kill the app, it will once once you start again, you will have your stuff back. So oh yeah, that's not important. Yeah. yeah so once once we've done this, we 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 want to know you know what's what's the next step. And the, the next next step for, I think the first beginner stuff that you will do, or you know, be the beginner advanced stuff, you've got this data. You want to try to filter this data. So you, we we're using what we call NS predicate, and um, just constraint based. So we'll we'll go with, um, and uh, we'll go back to the first example that we've done, and. Uh, Pretty much, we'll, we'll be writing a predicate that that does um, on our sample project. We've got this 
this property called timestamp, and pretty much what we want to, to, to do now is that to say, uh, show me the row that were created after after the first time we we used to we used the app. You know, to, I, r I run run the app once, and now if you would put this, so what you will you will do is that you will take this 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 stuff, uh, go there, go to your root view controller, and here, oh wherever, can anyone see? Yeah, oh, I think that's good. Uh -huh. And once you've done this, you will see that we won't be able to see any row, if, even if we created row before. And um, if you you press the plus button again, you, you get you get row. So that's just 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 a ni nice example of, of, of doing constraint based um, predicates. So. Um, that's cool. So we've done the first thing. We've seen that things happening. We can, we know we can filter. We we can use Cordata. We can filter things. What do we do? What do we do next? So next is we'll modify the current data model. So again, like like I was saying, I'm assuming you know something about Cordata. So it's not like you, um, uh, hopefully you've seen this already, and if you haven't. That's um, I'm I'm going to to <coughs> show you this this <laughs> so so uh, pretty much what we're gonna do is adding a name name attribute to our to our data model. So uh, yeah, I'm 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 going going to get to go slowly at first, but once once we we get into more more uh, details informations, uh, we'll go fast. So you're adding an attribute like this, then you're saying, you know, um, you don't want filter use you based on, on the timestamp anymore. You want filter based on the, the name attributes. And, uh, and the name, yeah, you want to filter. So that's, you're going, you, uh, you want to know, uh, you know, you're creating new entities, so new row, and you want to get um, all the names that can contain test. So you just want a row that contains the, 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 the term test. And um, so uh, anyone familiar with NS predicate? Mm, mm, not really. What's wrong with this? It's that like a good um, SQL or filtering or constraining so, so something is that and it's pretty case, they're case, case sensitive. So pretty much what we wrote, they were saying, you know, let's let's look at row that that's got the term test, but the test could be in lowercase, uppercase. And if we don't want to deal with, you know, usually when you're filtering stuff, you uh, Case is not really important, so if it doesn't work, it's because um, you've got this nice little uh, C and D that you can add to your to your constraint that says, "I want this." The C means don't care about the case. The D means jack trick for, for example, for the French. <laughs> they they really you know they're writing word with an accent without accent and stuff. So it's really good. So usually when you Filter text will always add this, this nice filter stuff that will help you, yeah, filter stuff. You know, it's um, it's hard to notice at first, and you will you will not understand why it doesn't work. So, and uh, when you're filtering um, uh, string attributes, you can use you know all the SQLite or normal stuff like begins with and with matches, like like is matches with wildcards. Like, no, this is again standard stuff. So once we get, oh no, once we get to there, we'll go. We'll we'll skip this one. We'll go to the one that's after number one. We run, run, run 
run our stuff and it's not supposed to be this, but yeah, yes, let's say it's so. Yeah, so well now we've done we've seen the predicate stuff. So the other stuff um they're straightforward, they look like SQL light, so I should increase I should put this stuff. They're straightforward, they're like SQL light you should be aware of some things. So for example, when at the end of the talk, we will we'll show you some nice tricks on how to write derived pro property on your, your data model and stuff and um, using Mo generator, which is a really great tool. But what you should know is that you cannot filter results. So you cannot use this for uh, sort, sort, sorting or you know, um, predicate, predicate matching, which is really bad. But in fact, you know, underneath Apple use raw SQL. So if, if you write uh, derived properties that they have nothing to do with SQL, so you cannot filter. But uh, yeah, you've got to do it once, see it crashing and trying to understand why it doesn't work. And um, yeah, like always, there's a really neat developer document documentations there. You know. And um, Yes, so let's let's imagine the other stuff that I, I had trouble with is was was when you create a new model and you've got many too many relationships. And then you're trying to filter things using uh, many too many relationships and it doesn't work. So uh, why why? So to, to, the nice things to know is that uh, when you you're using um many to many relationships stuff you should if you do this but so imagine you want we create row participants and 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 events events with one events got many participants many participants got many events and then you want to fil filter your, your, your stuff you say give me all the participants that's got the name anthony and why it doesn't work the reason why it doesn't work is because we're using a many to many uh, relationships. So again, this this predicate will be will be based on on top of the event pr predicate. So we'll say from the event predicate, give me all the participants that's got the name Anthony. And if you're doing this, it won't work. And again, the app will pretty much crash once you run this. Um, you will have to add any or self in. So pretty much you, you, you write this stuff like this, so predicate, give me any participants.name like Anthony, and again, this stuff. So that's a, a nice, nice thing to know again with, with predicate. You know. Again, this is not an extensive list, but it's just uh, error-prone stuff that's, that's happening. Um, next, next topic is going to be about transformable types is that um, imagine you're using core data, you you know driving, drawing wrecked or you're talking about car and you want to store the color of the car, and because we're using SQLite underneath using core data or not even even if you're using XM or something, a color is not something that you can store in a in a database. Um, because you only st st store prim primitive, primitive t type of string. So what do you do? Uh, do you, you you could like <laughs> I've seen many many people trying. You could come up with a clever way of encoding colors information to a string. Comma, the you know you could put the RGB in a string, and once you get this, you've got your custom property that that will get this out. Uh, but I don't think it's a, it's a nice solution. So Apple's Apple's come up, came up with something really nice. That's cool, transformable type that um, lets you add you your UI color, NS color, or any any type that you want to your model. And um, if one of this this class, um, you guys familiar with your NS coding protocol? It's like um, what lets you archive something, you know, write to file, uh, you know, get something. So there's not not even too much to do on your on your own. But there's always 
there's always the possibility to write your own custom color, you know, custom <coughs> color as well. So I'll show you both. So the first thing you do, if if UI color, and I can show you this from the, if I see something, nothing showing up. Yeah, here. Yeah. Because, and just let me know if you don't see. Well, because N, uh, not NS color. Because UI color conform to the NS coding protocol, we, if we want to save this UI color property, we don't have to do, or we don't have to do much. So basically, what we will say is that we'll just say, use instead of writing your own transformer, you you use a, um, a transformer that Apple did did for did did for us. So. We'll go through a sample, sample project. So if we go to the um, transformable type project here, basically you will, you will add a color property to, to you, to you uh, schema. You will, you will call this transformable. Um, then you 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 either either you can use your own custom transformer uh, transformer type, or you 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 can use this. And once once you use this, if you if you run, you will see you color. So basically, what I'm doing is that every time I'm pressing the plus button, if we check for. Yeah, every time we, we're pressing to the plus button, I'm creating, I'm setting this attribute, the color attribute to my row to be red. And, and pretty much when I, I read the content back. So it's basically, you're storing this and getting this f formation from the database, but it's totally transparent to you. Because you're just saying, my manager of J context, give me this color. And you just set, set up a text color. So there is nothing that you've got to do. And yeah, so that's, that's the second. Uh, so if you don't, if you don't want, if you, you believe the, you know, you want to write your own, own UI color transformer, again, you go, you go there, you know, instead of, of of using a default default one, you will you will set up yours here, you know, when you here custom property. You'll use this one. You create this class in your card anywhere you want. It's a subclass of an NS value transformer. And again, it's you know it could be anything. It could be you want split a string into two two things, or you want conc get a string or Basically, you 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 do everything everything you know. The, the the few things that you should know is that you should you should tell tell you you transform if you want to let it go from one way to another and from another to one way. That's I don't see any reason why you would ever not not allow this. But um, what's what's the class that's getting 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 used? You know, once once you transform this value, what is it becoming? So we are we're converting this to an NS data, so you're doing an NS data. But if you, if you want to save your, your color as a string, or pretty much anything you want. And this one's really easy, because we're using the built-in uh, key, key ar archiver. So we archive our, our, our value. The value is the color. And because the, 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 the UI color implements the UI uh, NS coding protocol, we don't have much to do or nothing at all. And once, and to, for the, for the same for the opposite, so when you re want to reverse this from a, so that's, uh, that's really nice and, you know, that's, that's good to know that there's something out there that lets you do nice stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, 
pretty much went through this. Now there is a there is a problem with the tr transformable types. It's that you once you've done this um, and once you're saving this as NS data or any data you want, that's really hard to to search and filter based based around this. So you will have to you know come up with some pre really clever way of uh, filtering. Imagine if you wanted all the red rules and stuff. So that's that's the downside of of, of using uh, custom type properties. And um, for example, I would never recommend doing uh, saving UI images as uh, NS and uh, you know transformable mm -hmm. type. You know, you get the image, you get the extractor, PNG information from the image, or the, you know the raw NS data and start this to a database because. <coughs> Like every database, you don't want to store too, too much information in it. You know, you much rather s store things that you can index. So that's like kind of the second downside of uh, using this. So now um, another another great talk. Imagine you release your app uh, app application to the App Store version 1.0. It's great, but you got one one hundred requests for you know. You came up with this nice app that lets you enter your first name, but not your last name. And <laughs> you, had, you had all these users that enter their first name, not they all want to add their, their last name, but they don't want to lose their first name. So what do you do? So e either you use lightweight migration or you use a, a mapping model. So again, you, it's just you're transitioning your database from, from one schema to another one without losing anything. And again, transparent to the user, uh, really fast, and most of the time it works. And a um, few years ago, Apple came up with this automatic migration or lightweight migration. So pretty much you don't have to do, again, core data is uh, made for everyone. You don't have to do much. You just have to make sure when you init on your if, if you use the sample code from Apple, so on your app delegate, you just have to make sure you're looking for a mom D, no, no more mom, means it's a compiled set of, of um, model objects. Um, then you've got to make sure that when you, you init your persistent store, store coordinate, coordinator, you pass this option saying that use automatic migration and create this custom mapping model for me. And once you do this, you can migrate from one, one schema to another one uh, with no problem. But, 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 because there's always something. So I just want to go through the but first. So you can on, only do this if you want to add or remove an attribute or relationship non-optional property optional, optional property non-optional. But if you do this, you've got to set up a default value. If not, the migration will fall because there's no way Codata will start you know, filling stuff for you. Um, add or remove an entity, rename a property, or rename an entity. And absolutely not change the type of a property. So if you, you're trying to change the type of a property, it's not going to work. And, um, yeah, we'll go through a sam sample, sample, sample thing, thing now. So what we, we're going to do is that we're going to start from scratch again, uh, transform lightweight migration. So we start with this one. I should always reset content and setting because we keep using the same way. So we've got our data model there. First thing we do is that we go to editor and we add a new model version. So imagine that was App Store version one. You've got all this property. And um, oh, let's, let's modify this one a little bit, saying that we, hold on, watch this one. Lightweight migration. Yeah, oh, here. So uh, you, Editor, add model version. So basically what you want, you just, so now you will see you've got two, two different data models. You've got the first one, 
that's the original one, and now you've got the new one. And so on the new one now, we want a name. Uh, we don't want a name anymore. We want, uh, we'll add random stuff. We add a first name, you know. So you, again, you set up the type. You string. You you go to your root view controller. You make sure when what we were saying is that when you get sorry, how do you get? You make sure that, uh, and Apple's commenting this for you there. So you make sure that you get this. That's again, that's the default start temp that's the default call data te template. So you will have an NS dictionary of options that's got, you know, saying that I want automatic migrations and create the, mag the migration uh, schema for me. So you pass this as an option. So now I haven't done something yet. So now you've got this version here, Okidok. So that's version one. Then your users going to start using version two. So you, you should t t tell them, you know, now let's use the new schema. So the new, again, the new schema is the one that's got a first name. So if we, we go there, on your root controller, you go there and you say, let's start using the second schema, the new schema with the first name. And once once you, you, you do this, you can run your app and, you know, like Rails migration or any great migration tool that does it, that it's not going to crash. If you don't, if you don't do this, if you, if you saying, don't create migration for me and stuff, the app will crash and you will have, you know, you will just say, you know, I cannot do anything. You've got this schema, the SQLite database underneath. Oh, yeah, there's a nice, nice way of showing you this. Is that if you go to, you know, to iPhone simulator, that's the previous, and you open this, you know, a core data again. It's a plain raw SQLite with some, some stuff. If you check the, the event schema, you will see that. It's got the timestamp and a name. Oh, and a first name. So one's, one should have. Yeah. <coughs> so one's got the ta timestamp and the name, and the other one's got the timestamp name and first name. So the migration was applied. And Apple always keep, you know, the, the temp for, for sometimes the temp temporary one just in case if you want to go back. So you've migrated your stuff, lightweight migration. And um, now there's something, something that um, sometimes, you know, like, like I was saying, lightweight, lightweight migration is not enough. You, yeah, so we've went through lightweight migrations. It's, it's sometimes not obvious to call it out what, what you intend to do with your light migration, so you m must tell him what to do. And um, for example, if anyone's using Rails, it's, it's kind, kind of the similar things. You, from one version to another one, you, you go from one step to another one. And um, again, Apple created a tool to, to do this, and um, that's, that's, so that's, that this mapping model stuff, it was the only things we could do, uh, you know, three or four years ago. We never had lightweight migration and stuff. So it's, um, it's really usable. And uh, Apple, Apple's created a great, great tool again to do this, this for us, a nice visual tool. The only stuff you've got to do when you, you're in CAD is to, to remove the, you know, create the inter before we had to line the interfering model for you. You're just saying, um, migrate my stop, but don't create m mapping model for us. So once, once you've got this map mapping model stuff, 
um, pretty much you go to find new. It's 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 exactly like like before. You know, we created this two data model. Okay, dark. But at this time, because you're changing something that's too important, or that's that's you know, that's you can't you cannot change using lightweight migration. So you will select your mapping model. You will select your mapping model. They will ask you uh, what model you want to to change first. You know, what's the origin? What's the what's the the final model? Then then Apple will come up with. This, this kind of stuff saying that we've got, and it's entity based, so it's entity by entity, so we, we'll, we'll add, um, you know, the first model, I can show you to, to end, end result, it's easier. So the end model has got, uh, the first, the base model, the source model has got just a, a name property, and the new model, the model two, for this example, has got the name and a first name. And what we want to do is that, when you move from from version zero or version one to two, we want to that on our row we've got the name property and the first letter and you know the first letter. So you've, you 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 will have to create this stuff yourself. So once you migrate, you're getting the first the first letter of the name and you're adding this to the row. And once it's it's added, it's there. <coughs> so what you do is that. You go with uh, another sample mapping model. So again, so that's the first. So that's that's what what it looked like at first. So we've got just a name property on our invent entity. Then we're saying, you know, I want. Not only that I want a name, but a first name, but I want this to be filled automatically for us. So what, what you do, so you, you create this mapping model. So, and uh, Apple is generating this for you, so they're, they're clever enough to see that if the, net, the, the, the property is called exactly the same, it's most likely that it's going to be the same. So you're saying, my destination name is the same as the source name. But it cannot find the first letter anywhere, so it's not doing anything. So you could decide, oh, the first letter is as well, as well, the first letter is as well the source name, or you you could if you've got maths, for example, if you imagine you've got accounts, you could say, oh, it's the source. Imagine um, by 1.4, for example, you want you've got this salary property even if it should never be hard-coded to a database, but you've got this salary property on your employee table, and you, are, you want to increase everyone by 1.4 person. So you will create a new migration that increases everyone's salary by 1.4 per person. Not that you know, it makes sense to hard-code salary, but... Uh, so here we don't want anything. And once, you, once you've done this, because we are doing something uh, really custom, like um, we extracting information, so there, I don't, I don't think there's any way for, for you know, to write something that will just get the first letter. So what, what you do, and again, that's a simple example, but some people will split a first name, last name, create two new properties. So basically, you're free to do anything, and that's that's the the power of. Uh, Core data. So, once once you've you've got this, you create a new event to event migration policy. You you name it to you know the way you want it to be named. You so basically it's a subclass of a NS entity migration policy. You and you've got to you know override some methods like create destination. So what we do for this example is that we've, we're getting a new object and we want to get the previous instance, so the source, the previous instance name, 
And if, if the name has something in it, we want to have the first index of this name and you save this to the first letter, uh, to the new first letter property. So if we, if we run this, uh, so uh, reset, content setting. Yeah, okay, doc. So if we, if we look at this, the before, sorry, mapping model. So we've got this stuff. We run this app. We've got our name property. We run this app. Again, same stuff. You know, we create row this time instead of creating, um, you know, uh, date stuff. We creating just a row with with the name test in it. And um, oh. <laughs> Then, then, then you, 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 you're saying, you know, I'm going to use uh, my, my new version, version two stuff. So you, we, we're going to the one that's got the mapping model. Um, again, yeah, you can see that we've got this. So we change, we create our mapping model or event migration policy. We build and run. Again, we're not resetting the content, and we can see that now it's using the first letter. And if you compare to the to, to database itself, is that you could see that if you go to the iPhone simulator, that it's not recreated at, at all. Everything was 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 swapped properly. Like you can see that now our event. It's this one, no. it's a name. So that's the original one. It's got just you know test, 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 and on new, on new event. The one that was migrated has got the, the name and the first letter was populated, so it was extracted. So again, you can do you you can do any kind of migration that you want, and you can migrate your data, and 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 as well you can always go back. That's not really. Um, that used to be really important for Mac OS X application when you know people were not happy with an upgrade and wanted to go back. So you could write a migration policy that goes from version one to two, and you could al also write a migration policy that goes from version two to one. But with the iPhone, you know, we don't have much choice. When there's a new update, you install the new update. So it's not that important. But there's always the possibility of doing this if you do something for. For, for enterprise and stuff, and you've got to move back to something so you could write a custom uh, migration policy that will move, move the data back. Yeah, so that's, that's this with the migration. And we'll go back to the slides. Mapping model. Yeah, so, yeah, and there are some keyword. We've seen the keyword source, that's the original entity, the destination, new entity, the manager. You can always refer to the manager if you want him to, to ask some, something. So it's like some keyword. We've seen how to create a custom mapping model, where to set it. And now we, we're about to conclude this talk with this, this great tool called Mo Generator. And I don't think there's many people that, that really knows about, about that kind of stuff. But uh, I think it's one of the greatest tools that, that was built for um, Core Data. So it was built by this guy that's written all this book, Jonathan Wolf Range. He's, he's, he's written you know, one of the first nice Objective-C book. And uh, I think he was using Objective, uh, Core Data a lot, and he got you know, annoyed by the fact that once you create your model and you, you, you try to get objects from your model, you know, not, it, it, was, it, was, it was never nice and there was no automatic way of getting them. There is a way of getting them, but once you change a property from, from your model, it's, you will have to regenerate your object and do everything. And if you want to write custom accessor to your object, like imagine you've got a first name, last name, and you want you want a, a custom property that says full name. 
this this will will help you greatly help you doing stuff. So that's the, that's the final point about core data. Core data is um, it's not really object re relational, but a row is always a cl a class. So uh, y it's like you adding object object. Um, s yeah, that's that's that's. Uh, a row corresponds to a class, so every row is, a, is an instance of, of an object. So that's the reason why core data is really, really, really powerful. So if you want to, to that's, a, that's a command line, line tool that you've got to install on your computer. Um, it's actively developed. It's, it's uh, at this address. There's a nice introduction on GitHub. Oh, it's twice the same, yeah. So if you go to the to GitHub branch, you will you'll see a link to the this app. It's not really your app; it's a command line tool. Sorry, and um, yeah. So it generates custom classes to your liking. You can even it's based around templates. So if you're not happy with the default te template that's coming up with um, a more generator, you can always create your own. But um, because it's open source, it's based around the community and. These guys keep accepting accepting new requests to improve things. So uh, it used to be really bad, but at, at the at the moment, uh, default template that's provided, it's extremely good. Um, that's a nice little script that uh, I decided to start using. Is that um, you point basically, more generator like I was saying is a command line tool, and basically just point. To you, to your data model that you generated with Xcode, and you t tell him, you know, extract the information from the database and create class for it, and save them under my, you know, model mo model model rule. So, what what this do does is that, um, yeah, if we go to this one there. Yeah, here. So here we've got this first name, last name uh, attribute to, to our core, core, data, core data schema. Um, then once, once you've got this, you use more generator to say, I want, um, I want to have proper class. So I've got an entity called event, so I want a class called event. So I can I can use you know instead of using value for keys and stuff I can use you know event dot first name or event dot last name and and so you 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 use this command line this command line again that's what I I, sh I show you before you will, you will run through. Yeah, you will you will run this command line, and it will it will create this class for you. One class that's called machine, machine generated, and one class, no, yeah, one. It's it's the same class, but no. two files called machine generated, two files called human generated. So you never touch this. So basically, this is all the, the glue code that make 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 things happening. Like you want to insert a new row. You want to know what's the name of, of your class. So a class event could be called something else. Um, and it defines all the attributes. So you go on your event.firstname, event.lastname. And, and then it creates this, this other uh, human, human stuff that lets you um, use your own card. So for example, you, you want a read-only property that's this, that, that concatenate the first and the last name, you will, you know, create this 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 stuff called full, full name, and um, you know, you've got that's a read-only property. So assuming that the first and the last name are never empty, you just add them together. That's object. We're extracting stuff from the database. It's absolutely transparent that we're using you're using. You know, SQLite underneath, and you know, a relational database, and we've got this stuff. And now, when you're using it, if you remember to to root view controller stuff, so configure cell here. 
So yeah, you can use property anymore. You don't have to write 60 lines of code for everything. And here we're using the full name. So once you run this, you know, we run this one, plus one in add code data. Once you, once you run this, so every time you want to insert a new object, again, I'm, never, I'm, I'm just adding a first name, you know, my first name and my last name. But what I want really to be displayed on my row is the full name. And again, it's transparent. You don't have to do anything. And once you press the plus, you, you see a first and a last name. <coughs> right. So that's, that's really good. And um, imagine you change your mind. So let's, let's get through. You say, oh, okay, look, so now I've got a first name, a last name, and I want a date of birth. So what you will do is that, so that's, 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 that's about to be finished. But, uh, uh, what you will do is that you will, will apply everything we've learned so far. So what you will, you will start doing is that first you go to editor, you add a new model version, you call this, you know, in art code data two. You've got your, your new, new model. So this one, you're never going to touch this one again. So you're going to the second one. You're adding a new attribute to your, to your row. To your, so you call this the date of birth. You know, it's, a, it's a date properties. So you save this. You're making sure you root view controller. Oh, no, your app delegate is using the option to, we use um, lightweight migration, so automatic migration for this one, because it's, it's really clear what we are doing. We're just adding a new attribute. So here we tell uh, options, we tell, you know, please use this. Once you migrate from one star to another, oh, sorry, options, just do it for us, you know, create a mapping model for us. We, uh, we created this date of burst. We enter root controller. Now when we're inserting, insert here. When we're inserting a new event, we want to, what we really want to do is that we want to do date of burst is equal to NS, or, you know, NS date, date, we'll set the current date, you know, I'm not going to create, set, set my date, but it, it, yeah, there's an error because, because at the moment, uh, we've just modified the model itself, but the, the generated class doesn't do, do anything, doesn't know anything, you know, about what we've changed. So if you check, if you check the events, the event machine, like, um, there's a first name, last name property, but there's nothing else. So what you will have to do if you're not using more, gen uh, more generator is that you will have to create this line, name this uh, NS data, call it date of birth and uh, but instead of doing this, imagine that's for one row, there's one property. Imagine you are changing your, you're adding a new, you know, plenty of, of, of new stuff, removing some, adding, adding, adding some, it's, it's really error prone to have, having to do this yourself. So what you do is that you run this stuff, uh, you, you save CD desktop in out code data, no, desktop and Tony Mita's. After in at data seven. Okay, look. so you run your script. Hopefully, there's nothing wrong. Oh, he's not happy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes. What, what, what you do then is that you should you should uh, tell that now we are we are about to we are about to use the schema two of our stuff. So we're about to use the one that's got the date of birth. Again, if you check the event, 
this one is not supposed to be here. Console. If you check the event, there is nothing yet. We run this command line tool. We generate the class. Yeah, uh, it's gonna work. Here is the current version here. In outcome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Give me one second. What's the national? Just this one. What's the name? Yeah, it's supposed to work. <laughs> never, it never works when it when it, when it should. <laughs> oh, is it the final? Am I using the after? Or? Yeah, I've, I've used the wrong one. So this one, what's this one? Um, even, yeah, just should find this one. Should find the. Yeah, oh, well, it, it doesn't want to work, but... Uh. Yeah, it's a, so basically what, what this will have uh, have done, and it was working just before, is that it will have added this, this death of birth property, and and then, yeah, pretty much that's, that, that's it. You, you add your, your death of birth, You've got your date of birth, you insert your new row, you define, you know, you display this on your row, and it just works. So, yeah, I think that's it for me. That's, that's all I wanted to say. Um, yeah, so, um, uh, to, to ma machine card again, you know, for more generators, the stuff you don't, you don't change, the human card is the stuff where you can add your own properties to it, it generate cards, you can use objects. And, um, oh yes, the last, last stuff that I, that I wanted to say is that if you create your own um, um, attributes to a data model that's not stored into, into the SQLite database or XML format, it's not stored from core data, you cannot use, you cannot use it for sorting. So you, for example, if we had this first and last name, you cannot use this for sorting on the full name or you cannot filter full names using using property that we've created um, not from core data because underneath it's using SQLite or SQL or XML or you know the building building stuff. So not the last stuff that I wanted to say and that I think that's really important is that um, core data is not the only solution out there. Um, once, what, what, happened, what happened to me at first is that it took all this time to learn the framework. I've used it for Mac app before, before iOS app. And uh, you're thinking, yeah, I know this, it's, it's the good stuff. And uh, it's like what I, yeah, it, that's, that's, that say, says this pretty much. That it's not because you know the framework that you should use it all the time, you know, um, especially when you're using this as a cache, imagine you, got your app, your Twitter app that's, um, I'm pretty much Twitter doesn't use it. Uh, but your Twitter app that's uh, getting all this tweet live from, 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 from the net and then, then you won't cache this and then, then once you update your stuff, you've got to see if core data cache is still accurate, if you should remove the cache or if you can, you can, you know, if if you if the cash or you, you know so what 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 I'm I'm trying to say is that be careful with core data it's it's not the right solution to anything to every everything um, try to see what what other people's doing but if you if you are thinking about creating an app that does you know a lot of editing that you won't undo feature and doesn't do much internet 
doesn't doesn't really work with web services and stuff. You're good, but and um, if you're not, if not, you 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 should you should avoid using Cardata because it's just gonna it's possible, <coughs> it's possible, but it's just going to be too painful, and you will hate Cardata, and you're not supposed to hate Cardata. <laughs> And again, um, last thing that there was this great developer last last week that wrote, wrote a blog post saying that Apple's working on Cardata all the time. They're using it, so they keep improving this tool. So that's the that's a. I know it's a big framework. It's hard. It's scary, and um, but they keep trying to improve things. For example, they perhaps something will come with the cloud. Perhaps soon when we create Cardata stuff, you'll be able to save you, you the information that was stored to find in the cloud without having to do anything. Or, you know, speed, speed's always a problem. Uh, there's, yeah, so Apple's got great engineers, they're supporting this. Core has got more than te 10 years, it wasn't called Core Data before. And uh, yeah, just, just try to see if it's good. And uh, if you like it, just use it. Be careful, be careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm.